to break you in half for a thing like that. About. Let go, let go of me. This here is what I'm talking about. This chicken claw with a ribbon around it, which you hung over my table. You're crazy. Why would I ever want to do a thing like that for? Let go of me. Don't lie to me. You did it while I was singing. Let go of me, I tell you. You're hurting me. I'll do more than that if you don't tell the truth. Spit it All right. Maybe I need some air. That's right, maybe I need some air. Joko Faraday. Yeah? I'll give you till I count three. To get out of that door, I'll throw you and your squirrel into the street. Now, listen, Doc. Is this 221B Baker Street or ain't it? Yes. And are you Doc Watson or ain't you? Yes. And you're the bloke. All right. You asked for it. I'm off it, Doc. Let's play the rest of the gang. Come in. Arrest that man. Rather an effective disguise, eh, Watson? Holmes! This time you have finally gone too far. I shall go straight out now and find another flat. Uh, Watson, uh, haven't you forgotten something? Very well. I shall... But when I return, it's goodbye. I've never seen him in such a temper. Hmm. Oh, he'll get over it. Won't you sit down, Inspector Lestrade? Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Well, uh, is there anything unusual on hand? No. Well, nothing in particular. I see. No, um... Crime is on the wane in London. Yes, I suppose it is. I suppose you have read about the killing outside a Riverside pub. The victim's name was Jocko Faraday. Oh, yes, I remember. There were some strange circumstances connected with his death. Yeah, strange indeed. A chicken claw, to be exact. Of course, I never dreamed for a moment we'd end up discussing this case, but... Well, it just so happens that... Well, I have it here with me. Ah. Yeah, shall I take a look? Ah, oh, thank you. Hmm. Is this the first time that a chicken claw has appeared in connection with the death? No, the second. Hmm. What was the first victim's name? Uh, Shackle. Howard Shackle. Uh, was there any connection between him and uh, Faraday? Not as far as I could trace. Now, Shackle was in textiles up in Manchester. Oh, very respectable. Faraday was the first mayor to board a cargo ship called the, um, Gloria North. Hmm. Yet they both seem to have Trinidad in common. Trinidad? What? 
Trinidad. Only a person who had lived some time in Trinidad would understand such a warning. What warning? The chicken's claw, of course. In certain areas of Trinidad, a chicken's claw bound with a black ribbon is a death warning. Holmes, are you sure? Holmes? I've decided to give you one more chance. Oh, good. Then perhaps you'll come with us as soon as I've got out of this and had a wash. Yeah. Oh, for my days in Afghanistan. Ambushes, poison spears, blood-curdling screams, peace. It was wonderful. I had just returned to my office after making a tour of the wards. I reached into the top drawer of my desk for a prescription slip. And there it was. I must admit it gave me quite a start. Of course, I notified Superintendent Pitt immediately. And I notified you, of course. Yes, an understandable reaction for anybody who's ever lived in uh, Trinidad. Trinidad? Yes, uh, Scotland Yard reputation for deduction isn't entirely groundless, you know. But I've never lived in Trinidad. You haven't? Well, how did you know the claw was a death warning? Then it is. I told you it was. Dr. Jonas, you must have known that or you wouldn't have reacted as you did. It was my decision to call the police. But I knew about the chicken claw. I had read about the Faraday killing in the morning paper. And when the same symbol showed up here on my desk, it actually gave me quite a jolt. But why did you think I had been in Trinidad? Dr. Jonas, did you ever by any chance meet a man called Howard Shackle? No, never. At least not that I can recall. Hmm. And Faraday, had you ever heard of him? Not before I had read this morning's paper. Then you've never traveled in a ship called the Gloria North. Well, despite the fact that I'm employed here at the Marine Hospital, I've had actually very little experience at sea. To tell the truth, I've never even been on a cargo boat of any kind. I see. This whole thing seems to me like a practical joke. A bad one, I admit. But it doesn't make sense otherwise. Either that or a maniac. Why should anybody want to kill me? I've got to get back to headquarters, Doctor, but I've assigned you a 24-hour guard. Unless you get any more wild theories, Holmes, I think we're going to leave the doctor to get on with his work. Don't jump to conclusions, Inspector. The chicken claw may still have something to do with Trinidad. Huh? I suggest you don't leave your office until my men are posted outside, Doctor. Of course, he won't try anything in a crowded hospital, but I'd rather not take any chances. No, neither would I, Inspector. Thank you very much. Good day, sir. Good day. If you'll excuse me, Inspector, I'd better return to my office. If you should want me for any reason, please don't hesitate to call on me. I'll do that. Thank you very much for your cooperation, Mr. Pitt. Good, Good day. day, gentlemen. Good, Good day. day. Chicken claws. This thing doesn't make sense. I believe Superintendent Pitt was right. This is the work of a maniac. I said that. Yes, <laughs> you said that. A Trinidad. Trinidad. Why not Istanbul? In Istanbul, they don't use the claw of a chicken. They use the ear of a pig. Chickens. Pigs! I'm going back to headquarters. I'll see you later if you're still here. Do you still think this has something to do with superstition in Trinidad? Well, then we must find the link, Watson. There is always a link in histories of all murdered men. One bond which ties them all together. Dr. Jonas? Yes. What can I do for you? Do you have an appointment? Yes. In a way, I have. I'm sorry, I don't seem to find your... No, you won't find it there, Doctor. This appointment was made a long time ago. I beg your pardon? Five years ago. Five years ago? <laughs> what are you trying... On board a ship, Dr. Jonas. The Gloria North. Five years ago, remember? Who 
are you? My name won't mean anything to you, Doctor. What do you want? I'm going to kill you. You must remember, Doctor, the last voyage you took on the Gloria North. The last voyage so many people took on that ship. But it's not true. I don't know who you are, but I had nothing whatever to do with it. I was only the ship's doctor. I didn't issue the orders. I didn't even know about it until it was too late. And you didn't do anything about it. But what could I do? You could have tried to stop it. You could have reported it. You could have done so much you didn't do, doctor. It's not true. It's not true. You've got to listen to me. You've got to listen to me. I swear to you, you... You got the list, do it! Got something up your sleeve. <laughs> what a graphic expression. What does it mean? You know exactly what it means? You're up to something. Oh, well, yes, yes, you might put it that way. And why didn't you let Inspector Lestrade in on it? Well, I want to do a little investigation on my own first, and the good inspector mightn't approve of my methods. I'm not sure that I shall either. Do you think I'm going to become an accomplice in such... Now what are you doing? We're going in. Well, what were we going to do? I'll show you when we get inside. And this is our records and personnel office. Here we keep all the records of all our employees. They're strictly confidential, of course, and may only be seen by... What's the meaning of this? Why, this paper a basket is half full of... What's your name? Never mind. Take it outside and empty it. This is a hospital, not a college for the development of backward bacteria. Uh, and don't argue. And fetch a pail of water and, and clean up the ink stains all over this floor. It's perfectly disgusting. And what did you say your name was? No, don't tell me. I may remember it and dismiss you. Now, hurry up, quickly. Go on, go on. Yes, sir. You think you're doing what on earth? Well, that's the quickest way of getting rid of it. I want to have a look at the records of Dr. Jonas. Now, why do you want to have a look at the records of Dr. Jonas? Trinidad, Trinidad. Oh, we're back on Trinidad, eh? Yes, I'm always, I'm always in Trinidad. Wait a minute, Trinidad is the link. Now you must find the bond. But Dr. Jonas told us he'd never lived in Trinidad. Mm. He also told us he'd never sailed aboard the Gloria North. If he lied about that, he could also lie about Trinidad. But you say he lied. How do you know he lied? Did you notice that he had a tattoo on the back of his hand? No. Hmm. He had tried to eradicate it. But there was still the faint trace of an anchor with the initials G.N. Gloria North. I believe that it is a fair assumption to assume that he sailed aboard the Gloria North with Mr. Faraday. Well, now that sheer presumption, Holmes. G.N. could stand for some lady's name. Gertrude Nelson or... Here it is. I thought so. He was a ship's doctor for five years. And here's a letter of recommendation from the ship's chief officer. Howard Shackle. Good heavens, and they were all members of the same crew. Yes, Watson. Come on, quickly. Where are we going? Have another chat with Dr. Jones. Holmes! Just like the others, victim number three. Hmm. That leaves one more to go. What do you mean? An able-bodied seaman. The ship's chief petty officer. The ship's doctor. One more remain. Who? The captain, of course. The captain.
Yes? Is Superintendent Pitt at home? I'm terribly sorry, but I'm afraid he isn't. Mr. Pitt isn't in at the moment. I was waiting for him myself. Well, just tell him that Sherlock Holmes called. Mr. Sherlock Holmes? Yes, that's right. I've heard a great deal about you, Mr. Holmes. Really? I've read a great deal about you in the newspapers, about your work with Scotland Yard. Rather, of course, it's been read to me. I should very much like to talk to you, Mr. Holmes. Well, if you have the time, of course. Oh, yes. Yes, I have the time. Won't you come in? Thank you. I was just helping myself to a drink. Perhaps you'd care to join me. Yes, I should like to. Whiskey? Well, have you a brandy? Yes. Oh, thank you. Tell me, Mr. Vickers, do you often stay here with Mr. Pitt? No, not very often. May I ask why you wanted to see the captain? Or would that mean di divulging some very important secret of Scotland Yard? <laughs> no, I don't believe it's a secret at all. I merely happen to believe that Captain Pitt will be the next victim of the mad killer who is at present terrorizing all London. Captain Pitt? Yes. Why? What possible connection could there be between Captain Pitt and such a murderer? And such a maniac? Do you believe that the killer could be such a maniac? Well, what else could he be? He might be seeking revenge. Revenge for what? For something that happened in the Gloria North. Gloria North? Yes. It's a ship. A cargo vessel. And every man that has been killed to date was once a member of the crew of the Gloria North on that fateful voyage five years ago. Amazing, Mr. Holmes. How did you learn this? Oh, it's very simple, really, Mr. Vickers. I happened to look it up in the uh, records at Lloyd's shipping office. I see. Why do you believe that Captain Pitt should be the next victim? Oh, it's very simple again. Because Captain Pitt is the one surviving member of the crew at present living in London. It's an extraordinary theory, Mr. Holmes. And have you any idea who this killer is? Uh, yes. Who? Uh, may I help myself to another brandy? Yes, of course. Yes, let me get it for you. Thank you. You said you believe you know who the murderer is. Oh, thank you. Well, it's only a little theory of mine, but uh, I believe I do. And do you know the motive for murder? You know, it's remarkable, Mr. Vickers, how well you managed to find your way about, for one who is blind. I beg your pardon? I mean, uh, find your way about this room, Mr. Vickers. Oh, yes. But it wasn't very easy for me at first. I have come to know this apartment very well. Well, not that I come here too often, but I have an excellent memory for such things. I have in my mind a picture of this room as clear as you have now. I see. And what if the position of the furniture should be changed about? Without my cane, I should be quite hopeless. You were saying you had an idea who this killer is? Yes. Uh, picture, if you will, a man who lived in Trinidad, emotional enough to murder, strong enough to use a knife, and able to use it with accuracy and dispatch. Do you hope to find a man who fits such a description, Mr. Holmes? I have, Mr. Vickers. Really? Who? Who fits such a description, Mr. Holmes? You're not blind, you know. I beg your pardon? When you went to fetch my drink just now, I moved from there to here. And you noticed it. Not because you spoke. You spoke first. Where did you hide the body, Mr. Vickers? In that cupboard over there? No! Yes? You must listen to me. Captain Pitt and the crew of the Gloria North 
We're not primarily concerned with the cargo. Or the cargo as we usually think of it. They were smuggling natives from Trinidad into England. I was married to a native, Mr. Holmes. A beautiful woman. And we had a beautiful child. Pitt came to me and offered to take him to England. Price was a hundred pounds, the ship, the Gloria North. He guaranteed their safe arrival. I concluded the transaction, I paid the money. But five miles from Southampton, the Gloria North was approached by a patrol boat. Pitt became frightened. The natives were dragged overboard in chains. They were drowned. All the natives. And my wife. And my child. I swore then that I would take my revenge. It has taken me five years, Mr. Holmes. And the men I killed deserve death. Perhaps. But no man has the right to be judge and executioner. I had. And I'm not finished yet, Mr. Holmes. There are others. And no one is going to stop me, not even you, Mr. Holmes. Is more killing the answer? It is my answer. Before you strike, Mr. Vickers, look in the mirror.